Greetings. This is Ish. How are you? I've just come to report on the energies that are coming through your solar system. The fourth dimensional clouds, as they are so notably called. And they are getting closer faster than we expected. There are some ridges in the black matter, as we call them, that make things move along faster or slower than necessary. And these ones are actually pushing it a little faster. So the effects of it are becoming a little bit more apparent. I know that many of you have experienced some of these effects. You're calling them the Mandela effect. They are becoming more and more in increased. Is that the way to say that? But anyway, it, they are increasing in their uh, volume. Also, uh, fourth dimensional energy is pulling the timelines together a little bit greater uh, when they pass through certain areas. And this is going to actually hit the Earth pretty full on. It is going to be a positive thing for Mother Earth because this will awaken a lot of her uh, unstimulated energy, let's put it this way. So therefore, she's going to be a little more stimulated. The energies of the Earth will calm down much faster since the equinox has happened, or the solstice, I'm sorry. And since the solstice has happened, the energies have calmed down uh, quite a bit. Have you noticed that? So therefore, they were calling, many other groups were calling for it to ramp up. But as you know, it's calming down at least until uh, September. We're seeing that September, sometime in September, the energies will hit and things will start changing a little bit more because these fourth dimensional energies that are in this cloud are sort of fluctuating. So that is why many of the third and fourth dimensional beings are leaving the uh, solar system. Anything fifth dimensional and above will probably stay because it won't affect them as much. So you can see that we can see already that some have left, but many are going to stay till the last minute, of course. But, uh, because, but they cannot get close to the Earth because they will be affected by the energy. So they're staying a good distance away from where the cloud is going to come through. However, they are experiencing Mandela effects as well in their own crafts and things of that nature. It is just natural for third and fourth dimensional uh, beings to experiencing the to be experiencing these things while the cloud is getting closer. So I'm sure many of you have also heard many of the different things that are happening. But do not worry, things will go back to normal after the cloud is beyond, has gone beyond uh, the precipice, and. Um, the cloud is over 400,000 miles long, so it will take a little while for it to go through, but it is, it will not last more than a few months, probably until the end of January or the beginning of February. Is there any questions about it at this point? I think it's pretty explained for the most part. Yeah, I think you did an excellent job of explaining, Ish. Um, I do have one little question, if I can, of course. please. Yes. I'm wondering, you say that this is a, a cloud. Is that also a plasma energy? There is plasma within the cloud, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, with any kind of cloud of this nature, you will have some plasmic energy, but it's not dense with it. It's here and there. There are small portions and pockets. A plasmic energy would cause it to become sentient eventually, but at this point, it's just energy. Okay. Is this energy what's causing the mandala effect? Yes. Okay. And could you briefly explain that for us? Well, what it is is the timelines are moving closer together, so you'll have overlap and bleeding into other timelines. And so in the closest of the timelines, things are similar but not necessarily the same. And so some things will be spelled differently. Some quotes will become different. Some places will have different 
be serving different kinds of food. Some places, some songs, it's it's affecting a lot of music because music is very spiritual, of course, and sometimes very fourth dimensional. And so, therefore, you're going to have missing portions of songs and additional portions to songs. Also, literature, it can be also fourth dimensional, and so literature will also be affected a great deal. So you're starting to see there are actually many, many reported at this time. Now, not all of them are truly Mandela effects. I have looked through that list, and some of the things that they are reporting as Mandela effect are actually things that have been all along in your society. <clears throat> so it is not necessarily all true, but you will notice there are some that are very obvious. So therefore, look at those ones. Uh, some recent ones are mostly in the music field, where portions of songs are missing and things are changed. But as they bleed into one another, as it, because they are coming closer to one another, that is all. They're just it's the fourth dimensional energy is pulling timelines closer together, and as it gets closer, they get as the cloud gets closer. And the timelines are being pulled together and bleeding into one another. Does that make sense to you? There may be a time when the timelines are actually very, very close together and you'll be able to see duplicates of things around you. So don't be alarmed. You're not going crazy. They will only, they will only last for a second because the energies in the fourth dimensional cloud are fluctuating. So you may see a fluctuating vision of something that is right of yourself in another dimension or of something that you know of in another uh, in this dimension that is close uh, very much similar in another dimension but it will be fluctuating so you won't see it as like a solid or it won't be as um be like seeing it in a, a spatial way, it will be fluctuating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to ask if there are any questions in the room with you there, Jim? Any questions here in this room? Yes. Ah, very good. Come around to the microphone. What will the emotions be like? that we will be experiencing as this happens? Your emotions will be as they should be, but when, when the timelines are closer together, you might be feeling some of the emotions of your other selves that are in these other timelines. And so, but if there are close timelines, emotions should be very similar. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Emotions should be similar. Not necessarily in all, in, in every situation, but I would say in a great deal, probably in a 97 percentile range, that if you're feeling something different, then it would, that would be something probably from the other timeline. But the emotions should be very similar since they're very close timelines. Any other questions? Well, I have one in the room here, if you don't there. Very, very good. Okay, Michelle, do you want to go ahead? Yes, please. Blessings, Ish. Good to hear from you today. Oh, it's good to Much speak. Much love. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you were, as the energies, first of all, I wanted to know if, um, like, people who are studying our atmosphere, who may not be a part of our particular type of community are yes. familiar with this energy also? Yes, they're familiar with it. They're just, it just is rare to run into it in this form, loose into, in the uh, spatial areas. So therefore, they have, there are anomalies of this nature in other portions of other galaxies as well, and have gone through other solar systems, but none have been human. And so, right. human 
uh, reaction will be quite different because it has been seeded differently or has been evolved differently than other civilizations. So, like, may, people who are studying, like, scientists, they can yes. see this also. They can see it. It is... Let me explain something to you. Fourth dimensional energy, most ships that are cloaked are in fourth dimensional or fifth dimensional energy. Right. Your United States and other countries can see this fourth dimensional energy, but they also see it, they can, they see right through it, basically. Right, right. But it's like uh, heat coming off of a sidewalk. It's sort of a wavy kind of thing in space, and they really can't get a good read on it, but they can see it, they can experience it and see the stars through it and know that there is something in front of the stars. Do you know how you understand? Yes, I understand. I do understand. Yeah. They do see this fourth dimensional energy cloud coming, mm -hmm. but they do not know what it is because it is so large. Right. They cannot perceive that it is a ship, which it is not, but they do perceive it as the similar kind of energy. However, the mm -hmm. fluctuation of this cloud of energy is much greater than any alien ships or anything that is in a spacecraft. Right. So I was curious, as it's coming closer to us, um, is it going to become, and as it passes in our direction, is it going to get more intense, more intense, more intense as the closer yes. it is? It will get more intense in many... We are assuming that it is going to become more intense since it's going to pass directly through your uh, solar system and through the Earth. So we're uh, assuming that it's going to become more intense. However, we believe that your fourth dimensional energy will get used to it in some ways, except for maybe the fluctuation part. You do have fourth dimensional energy within your minds and bodies. However, it is not in such a great amount that will make you, make you go crazy. We have decided that your fourth dimensional energy is not uh, in such great amounts that it will cause a great deal of harm to anyone. Right. There are those that, it, it, that do have great deals of fourth dimensional energy. They will be more affected than others. Some of you may be more affected than others because you, you have called in fourth dimensional energy and, and increased it and done many things of this nature. However, uh, there is protection for you from Mother Gaia because she does put up a perfect, protective field around the Earth. And this energy she wants to channel directly through her core. So she's going to try to make it as easy on Earthlings as possible. Thank you. Um, I've experienced a lot of what I perceive as Mandela effects over yes. the last few weeks. <laughs> you have a lot of fourth dimensional energy. <laughs> and they're really kind of fun and or wild. Um, but I would... I, I believe just that that's an attitude that all people should take Please see them as more fun than serious. Yes. Um, and, and I just wanted to thank you. And if anyone who's watching this has not watched the previous video, it's called, like, Ish Part 2. Um, I watched that. I was not a part of the panel, but I watched it. And that's how I knew that this was going to happen and not to freak out. So that's a really important thing. <laughs> but, um, Excellent. Yeah, so thank you so much for that information. And... Um, I love you so much. You're welcome. Take care. There is still part of this uh, experience that is unknown for you. We cannot tell you everything because we don't know everything because it's never happened to your species before. And so I'm sure that there will be things that are going to happen that are will be unknown or be a surprise perhaps even for us. But we are in fifth dimensional energy, so we will stay close by. We don't have to leave, and we'll be monitoring, watching, and also helping in extreme situations if people are actually being affected, because some portions of the cloud are more dense than others. Of course, this is the same with any kind of cloud, any kind of um, uh, thing that is in space as well. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, but anyhow, we are there to help in... Uh, extreme situations. There 
is one point about 316,000 miles inside the the cloud where the the fluctuation of energy is so extreme we're hoping that part does not go directly through we're not sure it the fluctuation is very extreme it goes thousands of miles one way and another very quickly so we're hoping that that is not going to be a major factor but we are trying to actually push that portion out of the way a little bit hello ish yes a uh, question from Carolina she wants to know when do we expect to meet this cloud uh, as we know time will we be running into it soon or do we know September so the month of well, September some, between uh, because of the it speeded up a little bit we're thinking more like the 7th or 8th of September we used to think it was more like the 15th but I think it, it's moved up about a week Okay, so when September comes, be more aware, and then what? Yeah, just September is the beginning of it. Sometime in September, with the fluctuations of speeds and the gravitational pulls on the cloud from black matter and different things, we don't have an exact exact time. Okay, but people can just be well grounded, and that will help assist them through the process if they're affected yes. at all. Okay. And those with pe those people with less fourth dimensional energies that are affecting them will probably fe find less. It will probably not affect them as much. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ish. Yeah. Hi, Ish. This is Valerie again. Hello, Valerie. I had a quick question too about the energies coming in. Um, I was just wondering: Is this a love energy that's coming? Also with this? Well, I cannot tell you that it's a love energy because it is not uh, sentient. It has no feeling whatsoever. It is just an anomaly. It's just uh, a scientific thing, if you will. It has no emotion attached to it. However, you can attach emotions to it if you want to because if you put the love energy into your fourth dimensional energy and then it will actually expand that. So that is a good thought that you put all your positive energy into your fourth dimensional energy so that when the scientific part passes, because it really has no emotion. It is not emotionally charged in any way, shape, or form. form. Even the plasma part of it is still in a very uh, uh, organic state, shall we say, in the, in the way that it is not fully formed to help it uh, correlate together as sentient. I'm not sure that's the right way to say it. As you see, eventually this cloud will become sentient and will be able to move on its own, but that will be not for another couple hundred thousand years. Oh, so this cloud is going to hang out for a while. Yes. Well, it's going to move through at whatever speed it it it's going is to it move us? through. Yes. Is it us moving to them as well, or to the cloud as well? In some ways, yes. Uh, well, you have to understand the the rotation of the galaxy is what pulls the so your solar system along. It's also this uh, this uh, cloud is actually rather static. So it's actually you moving toward it rather than it moving toward you. But you see, it is also moving in some ways as well. It's hard to explain to you, but yes, you're both moving. And uh, it is moving, but yet there's times when it becomes static or somewhat static. But not right at the moment. Thank so you very the, much. the movement of the galaxy is actually what's pulling all this together. And you have not been in this place in the rotation of the galaxy for 237 million years. Okay, I appreciate that answer. That was very clear. Um, one more thing. Does this energy, like right now, help to bring up the shadows inside of us, the past events that may be traumatic? that we can bring those up and clear them, um, and clearing them, I mean, by healing them, working through it. 
Ah, that is a good question. Me being from the fifth dimension, we do things differently, but this energy may help with that. I would have to look into that. You see, sometimes you, you shed light on how to uh, scientifically look at it because you're from a different uh, sort of energy altogether and a different, um, of course, perspective and density. So your density would have a different thought process about this than we would. Okay, so if we have our own thoughts about the energy coming, can we influence that energy coming toward us? I'm sure you can influence the energy that's within yourself, which would influence how it affects you. So, so therefore, if you stay in a high vibration. Yes. Okay. That's quite right. You see, it has no emotion or sentience whatsoever. So it's up to you to bring whatever good things to it that you propose to bring to it. It does not bring anything but what it is, its own self, to you. I get it. You Perfect. are the ones that have to put the positivity on it. Now, if you choose for it to work with negative thought processes and to clear them, I am not sure how that would work. Because if you're trying to stay positive and also trying to bring out negative, I'm not sure if you can... Uh, dichotomize yourself well I believe we can <laughs> I'm working well. on doing just this what we're talking about so thank you very much Ish and now Dan forgive my like English ask. because I'm, I'm not even sure dichotomize is a word but yeah. <laughs> you know what I meant <laughs> yes I did it's a, it's a word today and that's good enough <laughs> yes I will make up some words but I will make sure that you understand them. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's wonderful, Ish. We have a question from Sheer. He says, much love, Jeez. Ish. Yeah, he's wondering how much fourth density energy that he has, and do you have any notion for how it will affect him? Actually, he's been prote being protected by Remulac. Uh, he has quite a bit of fourth dimensional energy. Ramilak was concerned that Nivi and Sheer might be uh, negatively affected by it because there's so much fr fluctuation within the, the, the uh, center of the uh, cloud and so has put protection around you. And so you're probably not feeling too much of the fourth dimensional fluctuation at this point or even any Mandela effects. You will be affected as it gets closer, however. They can only protect you so much. Okay, wonderful. He also uh, asks, um, oh, hang on, the page is moving on me here. He says uh, he had a dream a couple of days ago in a place that he'd never been to before, but it just popped into his head the day before. Yeah. He wants to know if this is a fictional place, or is it a fictional no. place that he's never seen, or is it a piece of him? He's wondering what the pop what the thing popped in his mind for. The reason that he saw this particular place is because Remulac continues to bring him to different places uh, and Amok also takes him to different places and hopefully that he will start remembering these things. Of course, once he starts remembering, they will take him back. But they're taking him to spectacular places so that his memory might be jogged in the third dimension. Okay, wonderful. All right, I hope that helps him. Um, I have another question um, from Curly. Curly uh, has been away for a while. This is a person, more personal question, but it's important for people um, who are who may be struggling a little bit. She said she's struggling these days with the emotional depression. Wanted to know if there's a message that you could give her to help her out with this. Yes. Um, there is, uh, she has been blocked from some positive energies, but we can open that up now that I can speak to her and have a clear, uh, a clear path to you, Curly. I can see that there is some negative energies there from third dimensional and a little bit from fourth dimensional energies. But right now we'll just clear them out. And let me tell you something, there is, 
every human will experience negativity and times like what you are experiencing now. Do not fret. Things will change. You are going through a period right now, but it, it will not be long lasted. I am seeing that I'm going to clear out some of that energy right now, actually. One moment. Feel this energy that is coming to you. And I will speak to you later. I saw that you have a correspondence somewhere and it will be answered. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Ish. I have one more, just a quick from Jay. Uh, the question he has is, uh, was the snowy owl that he saw last night trying to attack him and his friends, and was it a manifestation of an angry shaman telling them to leave? So he's asking about this I, snowy owl experience. I would have to look into that. One moment. Where are you located? Where is he located? I'm not recalling. Give me just a moment. Uh, he's in Haverhill, Massachusetts. He's in Massachusetts. One moment, please. Massachusetts. Is this J. Earthling? Yes. J. 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 I believe that is. Yes, it is. There was a spiritual encounter there, yes. Okay, but he's asking if it was some kind of shaman. Yes, it was related to spirit and not to alien. Okay. It was not alien in nature. It was spiritual in nature. And it, they were involved in or in some place that was antagonistic for this certain spirit. And it threatened them. Okay. But it, is, it will not harm them at this point, but it just wants them to stay away from wherever it is that, that they encountered it. Okay. All right. That, that's good on that one. Have a request from uh, member Slava. Slava's yes. been one of the ones. But he has so many questions, I think it would be better if you could address them privately. He has a lot of questions about things going on. He goes several different directions. So if we could I understand. do something I for some him. Some of the questions are about his, his hybrid children. Yes, and other things. And that might, if uh, you could set some time aside for him, that would be wonderful. He does have a lot of visitations from his hybrid children. He, his mother's hybrid child also is visiting and is he has questions about his mother's hybrid child as well. Yeah, some of those could be done privately, I think. We have member Jess444. It's a name I don't recognize, but Jess444 says, Hello, Ish. Could you help provide me with some healing energy or an infusion for my current health situation? Much love to you. So Jess is requesting some healing. Yeah. I know who Jess is. All right. That could be somebody I could add to my list as well. I do know who this is. I have had contact with this person before. And therefore, yes, I can send healing energy. However, hang in there, Jess. The energy is coming. This energy will be slow in coming because it is dense. You need a more dense kind of energy for this healing, and therefore I am sending it in a slow pattern. When it arrives, it will also last for a great deal of time, probably 10 or 20 minutes. So therefore, just let it flow over you. Do not fight it. Just let it happen and accept it. One moment, please. Very well. Continue. 
That's all I have for right now. I was going to pass it back over to Valerie. She's got a couple of questions in, in the chat here. Ah. Hello again, Ish. I do have some questions here, and Krellick would like to go first. Krellick. Hello, Ish. Yes. Hello. I have two questions. I want to know uh, what you are, what, what uh, race of people you are, are part of. <laughs> that is so funny. I have never told anyone what species I am from. There was a good reason for this, but now many people know because I have made myself visible to some of them. So at this point, I will reveal myself. I am draconian. Okay. I am an ascended master from the draconian people. I was afraid to tell you at first because most people fear reptilians, draconians, and those that are not humanoid. However, my thought process as moving up into the different dimensions has been one of love and understanding for all different kinds of species. So therefore, I will now let you know that I am a draconian, draconian higher ascended master. Oh, yes, um, so if possible, I would like to meet you in the astral dimension. Many of you have seen me. I've given you glimpses of who I am recently, within the last couple months. And people have dis decoded what they have seen and are correct. I would like to see you in the astral as well. Since I am in spirit more than body, you would have to see me in the, in this, in the astral world. And my second question, just wanted to know if there's any information currently for me at this time. There is much information for you. Many want to communicate with you and have communicated with you. You have many questions about those that have been with you and have made contact but have not said their names. So therefore, some of these are familiar people and others are not. So we will discuss that at a later point because there are too many to discuss right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, Stephen, are you ready? Uh, yes, thank you, Valerie. Hello, Stephen, Ish. Hello. Much love. Um, I was just wondering if, uh, if I had a connection with you, the first question. Absolutely. And you've known that for a while. Sweet. And, and I was just uh, just wondering if you have any messages at this time uh, from anyone at this. Thank you. You are welcome. And I will speak to you about our connection later. You have had a past draconian lives, but we met in other species' lives as well that were not. Uh, reptilian in any nature, but definitely more humanoid. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Ish, it looks like we would like to say that it's been a pleasure to have you here today. And thank we you appreciate so your time and coming to explain the new energies coming and um, everything else that you've helped us understand today. And Very well. I just want to, to end with this. Your scientists know that this cloud exists. They, they do see it, and they see it coming. They do not really understand what it is entirely, but they know that it's heading this direction. That it, it just looks like a huge area of fourth dimensional energy. That's what it is. And so they are not really fearing it too much because most people are not affected directly by fourth dimensional energy. So um, they will realize what it does when it gets there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Hey, Valerie. This is Wendy. I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't have a chat box, and I was just wanting to ask Ish a question, if I might. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. I spend a lot of time in nature, and I we 
have been instructed, not instructed, but guided to spend a lot of time in nature to help us through yes. these. And I was just wondering if you could maybe give us an idea of how this energy may be affecting our physical environment with relationship to nature and ourselves and our relationship to that in making this transition through that. And Mother Gaia I also is protected. Wanted to... You see, Go Mother on. Gaia is protected in this timeline. She is immutable in some ways. The, you will find the Mandela effect working on the surface of the planet. But as far as the core and the interior of the planet, it is, uh, will not be affected except to reinforce some of her energies her, uh, and bring a greater amount of stability to Mother Gaia. Now, That's actually what I was wondering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are many things, other kinds of energies that are hitting Mother Gaia at the same time from the center of the galaxies, from different areas of uh, the solar system and things of this nature, which you have all been aware of as well. So she is dealing with many kinds of energy, but this fourth dimensional energy will help to stabilize her a little bit. Other energies will do the opposite, of course. But at this point, she is looking forward to some uh, reinforcements. Excellent. Thank you. And is this rush of energy that we're feeling also responsible? Is this meshing of the timelines also why we're beginning to more, become more aware of the other fractals of ourselves that we're being almost introduced to our ourselves um, is this oh, yes. part of the effect of that? Uh, that well, be, you realize that behind every one of your chakras is past lives. And fourth dimensional energy is what uh, some people use to read those past lives. So yes, you'll be introduced to fractals of yourself in many ways. There are many, many different things that would happen, but I have not gone into all of them because not, I do not want to give you a, um, I do not want to, you to experience things that are unnecessary. So the more information I give about it, I want to give just the basics because the more information I give about it, the more apt you are to experience a lot more things which may not be in your best interest. I understand. It's just some some of us are already experiencing those uh, ideas, well, and I was just thinking it was probably related to this influx. Yes, bring it all into a positive aspect, and yes, fractals of yourself will be initiated because of all the past lives in the chakra system. You're just living with all these past lives; they've come through, and yes. Of course, fourth dimensional energy might brighten one of those past lives up or a fractal of some part of the soul that has not been seen before or something of this nature. But beware, do not, do not bring it into a great, do not put great meaning on it because it may not necessarily be for this lifetime that you needed to see that. But it is part of past lifetimes and fractals of the soul that are not part of this particular timeline. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful answer. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you for coming. I am very happy to be here and thank you for your questions. They're very insightful. I, you surprise me so much as a species. Sometimes I, I look at some parts of your species and say, oh, it's hopeless. But then I hear then I hear all your questions and I have hope again. So, very much love to you and I will talk to you some other time. Hey, Ish. Ish, um, much love, Ish. We love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Was that sheer? Yes. yes. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you if you can come astrally to me. If you ever want I to visit. Can? I can. Ask Remulak to let me through because he has a block around you that only certain people can get through it. Mm. And 
you sh you have to ask permission. I have to ask permission as well. But if you say that you want me to come, it's more. Uh, I think that he will be uh, more apt to let me through, seeing as that I am a draconian spirit. Okay, thank you very much. Much love to you. Rabbi Lack is not fond of draconians, just to let you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Ish. Uh, that was very Hello, interesting. John. Yes. Yes, I uh, know it's me. It's that guy. Yes. So many people are asking several things. They want to know about help with finding their jobs that they love and then many people are asking to connect astrally as well so there's yes. there's, there's Curly who's asking uh, to connect astrally uh, Slava yes. still has we his can... questions uh, Daly Robertson King uh, here's Casper wants to know when things are going to change about his about Casper's workplace things that resonate um, Here's one that's asking about DNA infusions and things. So people are asking, what they, what can they do to help align themselves with jobs that they like better? What can they do to connect to you astrally? Do they only just need that call for you, or can you give that information, please? Yes. Remember, uh, many of you forget about the law of attraction. You can bring things to you, anything that you want, by following it. Now, if you're not familiar with the, law, with the law of attraction and how it works, you must reach out beyond your, reach out beyond your reality, bring in thankfulness and love. Thank God, Jesus, and all those that you believe in, the universe, or whatever deities that you believe in. Thank them for the things that are coming to you expect that they are coming to you thank every day for the things that you want to come if you want changes if you want finances if you want new jobs if you want anything that you want it's not work to do this it is belief and expectation and thankfulness that brings this to you it's positivity like things bringing into like, ah, you know what I'm talking about. Look up the law of attraction on your world because it will help you with all things. Your life can be more positive if you bring it into positive realms. Now, here is something else that you must understand. Many of you are living in each now but bringing a very sad or negative uh, feeling to now and you live in cycles everything is in cycles on your planet or in the universe even and if you bring a lot of negativity into your nows it will repeat it repeats itself try to bring as much positivity into your now as possible because if a now is positive it will repeat it will repeat if you have much positivity in your nows those will repeat now there are situations that that may seem negative like death or things that happen with contractually with pain and things of this nature but you can still remain positive through these things and remain in a, a positive cycle now you'll say well how can I remain in a positive cycle if someone has died and I am feeling very sad you can thank God that they are out of pain that they are in eternity and and living in beauty love and and all the positivity that is in the spiritual realm. Although you may be missing them, you may can still make that positive. Remember all the wonderful things that you did together. Remember all the great things that happened when they were alive. And do not be sad for yourself. That is very selfish. I know it happens. You miss people. It is. But try to take yourself out of it 
in some ways and bring all the beauty of everything that is happening with them and with the people around you. Try to cheer them up. Try to make them happy. I know this sounds like a very non-third dimensional outlook. However, it does work. And your energies as positive people are repeated in your cycle. And what does this do? This makes you a better example of a person that people would want to be, for one thing. It also draws to you much more positivity. You understand this? You can control, create your own life, and create your own destiny in some ways. Now, there are things that will always happen. In every density, there are things that happen that are unexpected, maybe perhaps even what you might consider negative, but you do not have to make that your, the focus of your entire life. Remember your positivity. Remember to bring in any positive thought that you can to help you work through this negativity. Do you understand this? This is something that humanity, that is why society in your realm is so gray and heavy, is that they have never learned to bring any positivity to their defeats, to their illness, to their anything, to their failures, because a failure you may, they may drown in it, whereas they can use it as a stepping stone for the next portion of their positive reality. Oh, certainly, there will be a few days of boo-hoo. But you must remember that is not why you are here. Remember that there is more important things in your or life coming. Everyone is important. Everyone has a positivity that can be used to change the world because that is what's needed right now in your existence, in your density. It is necessary for you to remain as positive as possible and to realize that the lessons learned are for positive reasons not to bring you down. But you need to know about the negativity so that the positivity can be more joyful, understood, and realized. Anytime there is negativity in your life, it helps you to realize that the joy is where you want to be. You don't want to be in the negativity or the sorrow or the sadness or the fear or the pain or the hatred. But you want to be in a positive place. And so use those things as a springboard to come up. Do not stay down, but say, no, I don't want to be here. I want to be here. And I know that many times that's difficult. I know that. But you can find a way. Some people love to be uh, depressed. Why? Because they get more attention. This is a way for attention sometimes for people to, to, to be boo-hoo and everybody will pay attention to me and things of this nature. But this is not a good example to the world. You want to be a good example. You don't want to be the boo-hoo. You want to be the one that is comforting the boo-hoo. You understand? Thank you so much, Ish. Carolina has a quick question, if she might. Yes. Hello, Ish. Much love. Carolina, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Ish, I just wanted you to know that uh, we love you regardless of which species you are. Thank you. So, don't worry. <laughs> um, I'm very, very large. Um, People would be frightened. <laughs> but we still love you. Thank you. I am glad. I have decided that 
it is time to be uh, truthful about these things, that if you dislike me because I am a draconian, then so be it, but I still have good messages for your people. Yes. Yes, and we welcome them. Thank you. Ish, um, I've been thinking a lot about you lately. Um, I was wondering if you've been around me, um, yes. or is it just my imagination, and is this to do with uh, the channeling I want to learn how to do? Yes, you are close to being a channel, but, and do not... Yes, I am around you, and you feel me, and you understand why I am there. And do not be discouraged. Your time is coming. And you have done some a small amount of channeling just recently, have you not? I think so. <laughs> yes, you have. And so, therefore, I have been helping you with that. Don't be discouraged. It will come when it comes. And I will help you. And you know what? Be of great cheer you have so much to be happy for and um, I love you and I will be with you and yes I am around oh thank you so much uh, is this new language that's coming is this your language um, no it's not my language but it is a language that I know of so oh, continue to continue to move yes thank you so much I love you I love you as well <laughs> Okay, Ish, if there aren't any more questions in the room there with you, we will bid you a good day. But let's see if there is. There's a question there. here in the room. Hi. Ish, how are you? I am fine. How are you? Um, I had a, a dream last night, and I'm wondering if there's anything that you can tell me about it. What is it? Um, uh, it had to do with aliens. Yes? Yes. Uh, were you visiting them? Or are they visiting you? That was a question. Yes. They were visiting you. And the, he, the question was, she wanted to know about the aliens in her dream. And as far as I know, they were visiting you. They were given permission to come through the veil that is in your house and just say hello. They were actually friendly. They were actually... Um, curious and they had something to do with alien Ken so um, does that answer your question yes, yes alien Ken actually let them through so that they could speak to you is yes and the, he said are you alien Barbie <laughs> I now relate that to uh, a toy <laughs> Very good. Okay. Is everyone finished in the room there with you then? And I we will bid you a good day then. And I will move forward. thank you once again for coming to see us and delivering such wonderful, truthful messages. Thank you. And I did not expect back to be here but for a few minutes, but thank you for having me. I will go now. Namaste. Namaste. Mm-hmm.